Hi guys, welcome. As promised, this is part 5 of the 5G stock analysis. In the previous videos in this series, I made a detailed analysis for Qualcomm, Broadcom, Skywalk Solutions and Corvo, and I'll have it linked in the description box below. In this video, I'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of these four popular 5G stocks to find out which is the best stock to invest at current valuations. So let's jump into it. I'll be using the quarterly reports in this video. Here's the revenue for the most recent quarter to give an idea of the relative size of these four companies. Broadcom and Qualcomm are the larger 5G companies. However, as you will see later, the story is quite different from a profitability and valuation perspective. Qualcomm and Skywork Solutions revenue has increased by 62% and 68% from the same quarter last year, while Broadcom has only grown by 13% and Corvo by 26%. So both Qualcomm and Skywork score a point here. I'll keep the scores as we go through the numbers and tally them up towards the end of the video. The gross profit has also grown from previous quarters, but the key here is gross profit margin. Broadcom has the highest at 59% and the lowest is 50% for Corvo and Skyworks. This high level of gross margin is a testament to the strength of the 5G market space and all companies have products that can fetch these high margins. So all companies score a point. But all that gross profit needs to be translated into net income through efficient organization and management of the company. Here we can see Broadcom's net margin is just 19%, same as Corvo. And Skyworks and Qualcomm can achieve a net margin of 33% and 29% respectively. So both score a point here. This chart shows the ratio of allocation of revenue in R&D and sales general and administration. R&D investment is especially important for technology companies as they need to continuously develop better products to keep their market share and maintain their margins. Sales general and administration not only includes their marketing investment but also the management's compensation. Both Broadcom and Qualcomm invest a bigger portion of their revenue into R&D at 18% and 20% respectively. And Skyworks is the lowest at only 8%. But Skyworks achieved the highest net margin of 33% as you have seen in the previous chart. The insight that I take away from this is, Skyworks is probably quite targeted in their product area and is having a better R&D strategy compared to the rest. As for the sales general and administration, once again, Skyworks is the lowest at only 4%. This is a story that I kept seeing in this analysis. Skyworks seems to be a very prudent company. Skyworks and Broadcom score a point here. Next up is the quick ratio. The quick ratio represents the ratio of total available cash and equivalents over the total current liabilities. It is used to measure the company's ability to service its short-term financial obligations within the next 12 months. A ratio of 1 or above is preferred. Both Broadcom and Corvo have healthy levels and each score a point. Broadcom has a huge mountain of a long-term debt at $41 billion and Skyworks has none. Zero long-term debt. Debt is an important financing instrument that allows companies to leverage and grow, but only up to a certain point. The ratio of debt over total assets shows Broadcom the highest at 54% and Qualcomm at 40%. The effect of this huge debt can be better appreciated using this chart of interest expenses versus net income. Broadcom's interest expense is $570 million versus net income of $1.3 billion. That is almost 44%. I'm not sure how many years it's going to take Broadcom to clear this debt. I view this as a big risk in their balance sheet and I would not invest in Broadcom. Further to that, as you will see later, Broadcom pays a high dividend rather than quickly clearing this debt. Due to this, I am going to take away a point for Broadcom while Skyworks scores another point. Qualcomm, Corvo and Skyworks repurchase their stock. They have a good stock repurchase plan. For example, Skyworks has allocated $2 billion to repurchase its stocks. All three score a point. Broadcom is the only one out. I would not be surprised if Broadcom takes advantage of its high stock price to issue more stocks and shore up its balance sheet. Broadcom has the highest book value at $58 and Qualcomm is the lowest at $650. This is the value of each stock of the company. It is calculated by taking away the total liabilities from the total assets to arrive at the net asset value and dividing that by the number of shares. Qualcomm's book value is so low because it has the largest number of shares at $1.1 but to make a comparison, we need to convert the book value to price to book value. Here, we take the current price of each stock and divide it by the book value per share. Value investors look for profitable companies that are traded below 5 price to book. 
but it is very hard to come by and you must also be very careful. Sometimes companies that the market has given up may end up with such low valuations. But here we see Corvo which is a profitable 5G stock at 2.7 price to book. I would give a point to each Broadcom, Corvo and Skyworks. You might be wondering why the market has priced Broadcom at 451 while Qualcomm at just 129. I believe one of the reasons is due to Broadcom's dividend payout ratio. Their dividend payout is more than 100%, meaning that they pay out more than their net income, dipping into their reserves to pay out dividends. This is a trap that I've seen time and again dividend investors fall for. Eventually, the money will run out and the dividend investors will flee and the stock price will drop. Instead, Broadcom should use their cash to pay off its debt. But I like that Qualcomm and Skyworks sharing their profit with shareholders through a more prudent dividend payout of 30% and 16%. So both score a point here. The trailing earnings per share measures the earnings per share of the four most recent quarters and is a proxy for yearly earnings per share. We'll be using this base data for the next few slides. Now the trailing PE ratio for Broadcom is a high 53. Like I said earlier, probably the price is bumped up by dividend investors. Qualcomm has the best trailing PE ratio at 22, followed by Skyworks at 27. Both are reasonably priced. It is hard to find such good profitable tech companies in the hot 5G market space at these valuations. Both score a point each. Peter Lynch, the famous fund investor, popularized the PE growth ratio. It is a ratio of PE to revenue growth. It is designed to evaluate the price of a stock by also taking into account the revenue growth. A value of 1 indicates that the price is growing at the same pace as the revenue. A value above 1 indicates an overpriced stock and a value below 1 an underpriced stock. This is what value investors look for. For this analysis, I'm using the trailing PE ratio over year-on-year -year revenue growth that I shared in the very first chart. Based on this, Broadcom and Kobo are overpriced at 3.9 and 1.6. Qualcomm and Skyworks are underpriced at 0.35 and 0.4, so both score a point here. Score time. Let's tally up the scores. It is no surprise that Skyworks is a clear winner having scored in every measure except for that quick ratio. With that, they score 10 out of 11 points. Second place goes to Qualcomm having scored 7 out of 11. Only Skyworks and Qualcomm have passed the PE growth test as well, making them a value investment at current levels and growth rate. Corvo and Broadcom only scored 4 and 3 out of 11. I would not consider them for investment for this round. Do subscribe to my channel if you have found this sharing useful and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And also, do let me know your comments to this sharing in the comment section below. Do you agree with this assessment or do you have differing views? Let's continue to have a good conversation on these 5G stocks and their valuations. And I'll see you soon in the next one.